back here at Crestview and a huge night here, no pun intended for the Crestview Knights as uh, Doug Etzler has been named the new basketball coach here at Crestview. Aaron Matthews joined by the athletic director, Trent Kreischer. Trent, just talk about this process. If you want to look up Whirlwind, this would seem to be a literally two week stretch from uh, when you re announced the resignation of Coach Best uh, to uh, the hiring of uh, Coach Etzler here tonight. So obviously uh, when Coach Best resigned, um, it was a tough pill to swallow, a little shocking, but certainly respect his decision. Uh, you know, he, he is a class act in every sense of the word, and uh, uh, we will certainly miss him roaming the sidelines, but we knew he had to have a game plan. Uh, so uh, our superintendent, Mrs. Molikoff, and uh, our high school principal, Mr. Bowen, and I sat down and we kind of developed, okay, what, what do we want to do? And, and we decided that we were going to post a specific post. We wanted somebody um, with some varsity experience. Uh, we preferably wanted someone who had played at, at the college level. So we were very specific in our posting. And uh, we also, we didn't, we didn't shoot it out to every media outlet. We, we decided to post on the teacher listserv and we posted on um, our internal uh, service, our email, and uh, we just saw what we got. And uh, after a phone call with, with Doug, uh, we realized there was some mutual interest and uh, we were pretty excited about that. So we, we turned our focus to him. Uh, he was in town in Fort Wayne uh, last weekend coaching his son's AAU team. Yep. And so we were able to meet up with him a couple times and, and Sunday evening it just became pretty clear, you know, four days ago. So pretty cool. Obviously a whirlwind in that regard, but also uh, a buzz in the community and you know words started getting out the board meeting minutes were posted last night so people were you know they were using that as their spoiler alert sure. so to speak sure. but uh, just talk about the, the vibe that has come about with the news of Doug returning back to Crestview. Uh, you know I, the phrase that I hear is a home run mm -hmm. uh, and and to use a, a baseball analogy I, I think it is uh, you know Doug, Doug has He's a household name around here yes. even now. Even little kids know who Doug is. They they see his name in the program and they they you know they they know the the, le the legend and the legacy that that Doug had here as a player and and uh, so that obviously translated. People you know people younger than me and my age we were younger when he played and so we're we're excited and, and it brings back memories of, of seeing him do some pretty phenomenal things in here as a player. So obviously every, everyone's excited about that and, and listening to him talk to our kids uh, before uh, we came up here tonight. Uh, you know I was ready to go. I, I'm like is it is it November yet? Let's let's do it. Mm -hmm. So um, you know I, I'm just I can't say enough how excited I am that we were able to to make this happen. So, how how was it for you from a dad perspective? Because your son Carson was a part of last year's team. You're you're an administrator. You're an athletic director. You have to keep some things work, and you have to keep some things at home. And you couldn't really tell him, could you? How, was he was he bugging you constantly? Was he trying to feel things out on Twitter, or did he finally just say, "Dad, just spill the beans already"? A little bit, especially when when Coach Best resigned. I I didn't want to be the one to share that story with mm -hmm. him um, because uh, out of respect for Coach Best, and Correct. I knew he was going to meet with them the next day. Well, uh, Kalen Metzler, he he kind of has his ear to the grind uh, to the ground, and I think Coach Best. Um, wanted to talk with, with Javen and him, especially early because of the recruiting process and assure them that, you know, if this transition would take a little longer that he'd be there to help them. So Kalen knew a little bit and uh, so I, I got grilled a little bit at home and I just told him, I said, it's not my story to tell. and, and to be quite honest, he didn't ask me one thing about <laughs> this particular uh, situation. I, I think the buzz kind of got to him before I had to, and I have a feeling that Kalen was the informant again. So, <laughs> so yeah. That, that kind of happens, you know, he's 6'8", you're yeah. a junior, yeah. and yeah. you know, you're, you're one of the leaders now. Yes. Um, just, you know, just overall, we talked about the vibe, and you said a home run hire. Just how special is it for you uh, to have a person who is of the lineage of the name of this gym back here roaming on the sidelines? Well, first off, um, I can't tell you how much respect I have for Coach Ray Etzler. Mm -hmm. um, he was the elementary principal. Um, he hired me, gave me my first job. 
and I'm just talking about it. I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> right now. And and, and uh, I I was somebody that he wanted, and he had to go to bat for me because uh, the superintendent at that time he wasn't sure that I was ready. I was a, you know just right out of college, and right. at that time we didn't hire people out of college, so. Ray Ray took a chance on me and pushed for me and and was my first principal and and it's just special to to be able to be on this side of it with with his son Doug and, and I had a conversation with with Coach Etzler Coach Ray today and, and it was just a good conversation and, and um, you know I'm, I'm just so excited to have Doug here and I know he understands what what this all means right what his dad's name back there means and and uh you know we we couldn't have found a better person for this job at this point in time you know okay. and moving forward you know going from the shock of losing someone who took our program to new heights to someone who's been here and, and done incredible things too it's awesome Trent, we appreciate your time. Obviously, a big uh, your first major hire as athletic director here at uh, Crestview, but uh, a great hire that you guys have made. Looking forward to basketball, even though we're still in the 2019 yeah. school year, still basking in the glory of six weeks ago sure. at a state championship down in Columbus for the Crestview Knights. We appreciate your time and uh, congratulations on the new basketball coach. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate Trent Kreischer joining us, the AD here at Crestview. We're going to hear from the new boss of the Crestview Knights basketball program, Doug Essler. We'll join us coming up here on WOSN. Welcome back to Ray Etzler Gymnasium. Sitting to my left here, your right, the new head coach of the Crestview Knights, Doug Etzler. Doug, congratulations. This has got to be a surreal feeling for you and the family. It is. It's, uh, it's been a crazy week, and uh, really blessed to have an opportunity to come home. Well, let's uh, get into a little bit of backstory. You played here at Crestview. You played at Ohio State from 91 to 95. You were the coach at Tees Valley for 14 years before getting a chance to come home here to uh, Crestview. Just, I mean... It's almost like it's full circle, isn't it? It is. You know, I, like I said earlier, I had an opportunity to, to grow up here, play for my dad. I remember riding the bus to the games before I was even allowed to play in the games. And then <laughs> putting the Crest Unite jersey on w was a big thing for me growing up. And I think it's a big thing for little kids today. And then, you know, being away for a while, having a, a chance to start my own team and, and coach my own guys and, and do things maybe different than the way I was brought up but you know start things from scratch almost there at Taze Valley and having something like this open up it, it was not expected but uh, definitely uh, when it opened up I I perked up a little bit and was glad to have an opportunity to, to come home and talk to did him. you really have any idea that this would even be a possibility and was it in the back of your mind to consider applying it, uh, once it opened up yeah obviously it's, it's something I wanted to do but I honestly had sent Coach Best a text on Monday or Tuesday of the week right. that, that he said that he wasn't going to do it anymore, trying to set up our summer regular schedule that we, we scrimmaged every summer. And he said, give me a couple days to work things, work through some things, which I thought, get his schedule all straightened out. Totally. And then, you know, I started getting some text messages that he was going to step down and just really shocked. I mean, JB, what he's done here and you just want a state title, that's not something I, I expected or thought would happen to getting phone calls and having an opportunity to come and interview and it, it's been a whirlwind but it's been kind of fun. Well you you were here for the Hicksville game. I remember seeing you because we had that game for WOSN. Saw you on the tournament trail as well so you got to see this team up close and personal. Granted eight of those players uh, that were on the roster from last year won't be here. However you do have a very special piece your nephew Kalen. How's that gonna work? Your, your, your uncle Doug but at the same time your coach Etzler and you know differentiate family and hoops and vice versa, but at the same time, anytime you got a kid the caliber of Kalen Etzler, it's definitely appealing to a prospective coach, isn't it? No doubt about it. You know, having the opportunity to watch Kalen play this year, being far away and coaching, I, mm -hmm. I don't get a chance to do that a lot other than in the summer, but got a chance to catch four of their games this year, and it, it it's going to be special. I, I've coached my son in AAU. Yes. So I've been around family-type things. The toughest thing is on the other side of things, I had two nephews that were playing for me at Taze Valley. So, you know, you're leaving two, you're, you're coming back home and you have another nephew that you're going to have an opportunity to coach. But, you know, obviously, Kalen's a special player. Yeah. It's going to be 
great having an opportunity to coach someone, the, the caliber player he is. And he's going to be a big piece for us. But like I told the guys down in the locker room, it's going to take a, a whole team commitment to get this done. And, and we're going to have to do it together. But obviously, it, it helps having that in your back pocket. You mentioned the family aspect. Your son Gavin's going to be a freshman. Your daughter Kylie will be a junior. And your wife Lisa. Did you have to sell them on coming home? Or were they, were they all in from the go once it looked like it was a probability? You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit tougher than mm -hmm. what it was, but just having the opportunity to, to be here for the game when we come back and watch right. Hicksville, you know, my kids seeing the environment of what the community does here for their, their sports programs, it was a pretty easy sell for those two. You know, I said, that's Crestview. Obviously, it helps when you're really successful and, and they're mm -hmm. winning, but that's, that's what I grew up with, and it, it's different. Basketball's a little different back home. As far as Central Ohio, football's king. Yes. And it, basketball is important, but it's not like it is here in Northwest Ohio. And, you know, my wife, she sees that. She's been, you know, through it with me. We, we started at Shawnee together, and, and we, we were lucky enough to, to hit Shawnee when we went to state. We went to the regional finals and state final mm -hmm. four two years in a row. And, and she's used to that. It, it was a little different at Taste Valley. Still followed us, but she knew coming back here, that, that's an expectation, and it, it wasn't a real tough sell. Um, as far as you know, the kids and everything, you had a chance to meet with them prior to the press conference. Uh, what was the vibe down in the locker room? I'm sure I was, you know, uh, Trent mentioned it that he was ready to go. He's like, "All right, is it November already?" But just what was the vibe that you got from the guys? Were they open ears? A lot of questions, very receptive to things. Or? They're very, very attentive. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, I told them, you know, what I've gone through the last week has been a whirlwind, but what you've gone through the last week has been been crazy you know you you coming off the state championship and that high and then coach best telling you you know he's not coming back so they've been through a lot too and i think getting someone named and knowing who's going to be here is good for them too i told him i'd like to be back in the next couple of weeks after school a couple of nights to talk to the other coaches here in the building and get a june schedule together so i can mm -hmm. get that in front of them and and kind of work through what we need to do together and i i need to get on the court with me i i, I got to see all the pieces that we have but it, it's going to be a, a fun group to work with, and they, they were very attentive and receptive. It's almost like a crash course, so to speak, as far as taking the job, meeting with the team. you got to put a staff together. You haven't had a chance to do that, but you mentioned that you would like to, if possible, retain the guys that were here to pick their brains because they've been around these kids. They know the atmosphere here, especially on a Friday and Saturday night in the yeah. Ray. It's so special. Yeah, and, you know, obviously if I can get those three on board, I mean, I, I know them, but I don't know them well, well mm -hmm. outside of Tony. Tony was in my wedding, so obviously I have a good relationship with yes. the Springers. So I, I would love to have them on board to help me, to help the kids. But uh, I want some consistency for the, for the guys coming back, and True. I think they would really provide that for us. You um, obviously you have to leave a program to come to a new program. Taze Valley is a place you called home for 14 years. You won three sectional titles there. You had success with a Division I program, which is very hard to do in the Central District in Ohio. How'd your guys take the news? Did they understand? Are they a little hurt? They, yeah, but I, I think it was very shocking because in the spring, about the same time, we have a meeting that here's our schedule for the summer. We've been working out, but we hadn't had our official spring meeting where we're going to go over you know the nuts and bolts of what we're going to get to and I think they were all expecting that so it, it was it was a tough meeting you know mm -hmm. for me to say goodbye to those guys and and put them in a tough situation now they got to wait for a head coach they got to wait to find out what their summer plans are and, and for someone that's been there with those guys that's that's a tough situation to put a group of guys in that you really care for so I'm hoping things move quickly for them I, I know they're going to be successful I hope they, you know, they find the right guy for them. But I, I had great kids there, and I, I wish them the best. What can we expect from a Doug Etzler coached ball club here, coming the winter uh, here at Crestview? You know, I, I just hope that we can bring a, a, a tough nosed defensive product to the to the floor every night. Obviously, offense is going to be important to mm -hmm. us, but we, we got to make sure that we continue what Coach Best did. They, they guarded like crazy. Yes. And I don't want that to change. I think if we can build on that. We, we can fit in the pieces offensively of what we need to do, but tough-nosed defensive team. Talk, uh, talk a minute about Dad. I know he's helped out. Uh, he helped Jeremy at the junior high level with the feeder programs, and he's, he's been down there for a long time, and he's, he's found his niche. It seems almost like a second coaching life. Uh, 
he, you're gonna you're gonna have to sell him on on helping out and you know being down maybe at the lower levels or th- maybe coming up if need be. I think he's planning on and you know kind of the same role that he did last year, have a great group down there. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of consistency. That's one thing that's different. I had two middle schools to fill four coaching jobs. Oh wow! Me. And it, and it was a lot of turnover where when I was in school here, Coach Springer and Coach Bagley were. They were here. That was our yeah. junior high coaches forever, and I want to keep that with Coach Miller, uh, Coach Minning. I have my dad involved in that, and mm-hmm. the consistency will be good. And I, I hope he stays on board. I think that that'll be special having having him there. I'm in the program and, and getting a chance to work with your dad. Dad, make any type of phone calls to you and say, "Hey, you uh, you interested in coming home, or is this this totally on you?" Because I'm sure I'm sure you and Dad have been spending a lot of hours on the, burning the cell phone minutes and landline uh, over the course of the last two weeks. We, we've talked, you know, obviously yeah. I want to get his feel on everything. You know, this, you moved to a, a community that you played at and you had pretty good success as a player. Mm-hmm. The gym's named after your, you know, your father who had great success here. There, there's some things that, is this the right thing to do? It's a lot of pressure, you know, mm-hmm. going into it, but he, he was excited, you know, he was excited to talk about the pieces they have coming back, the tradition, the community support, and, you know, it was all good conversations, but it came down to, you know, you, you got to make sure it's right for you and your family, and he left the decision to me, but I, I could tell he's excited. You, you mentioned family, and you've got two older brothers, you have a sister, and I, I know Andy a little bit, and uh, you think it's still take him one-on-one? Hey, I, I try to stay away from playing as much as possible. My brain tells me what I used to be able to do, but he's a little bit bigger than me. I think he can just take me down to the block and score on me every time. You know, we, you, obviously your family's here and they're full go with this, but our final question for you is, how special is it for you to coach in a gym that A, you played in, but also bears your last name? It, it's tremendous. When I, you, know, you, you think about it, I, I didn't think it was even a possibility. Like I said, JB mm-hmm. being entrenched here and couldn't be more proud of what he's done here. You know, as a former player, he he took the tradition to new heights. So I didn't even think it was a possibility, but you know, if you had told me at the beginning of the career that this is a, a, a possibility that you could go back home after you got a little bit of experience, it, it's really special. Doug, congratulations, welcome home. Thank you very much. Doug Etzler, the new coach of the Crestview Knights, getting ready for the 2019-2020 basketball season here at Ray Etzler Gymnasium. You've been watching special coverage of Crestview Basketball's announcement of Doug Etzler as the new head coach. For Trent Kreischer, the athletic director, and Coach Doug Etzler, I'm Aaron Matthews. Thank you for watching on WOSN.